Welcome back to the channel. Today we're gonna to be doing something really exciting, and that is a master transfer. So this is really cool. This album was recorded by my mother in June of 1981 with a famous Canadian musician named Graham Townsend. The album was only reproduced on cassette tapes, and the quality of those tapes has degraded significantly to the point where it's difficult to listen to the album. This master tape should be a way to listen to the album in its original quality, and it should sound very good. The only problem is that it was recorded on some app, uh, Ampex uh, 456 tape, which is prone to the sticky shed problem. What that basically means is that the magnetic coating that's on the tape may come off when I try to play it, and that would be fatal to the tape. So what I'm gonna try is playing it back on my RT909 and record it using my Tascam solid state recorder. We're using a WAV file and a flash drive. It should be lossless. Uh, hopefully we don't encounter the sticky shed problem. If we do, uh, there is a technique where you can put the tape in an oven at a very low temperature for a very long time and the magnetic material will stick to the tape long enough so you can get one more play out of it. I'm hoping that I won't have to resort to that. This was stored in a safe deposit box for decades and we didn't know it was there until recently and so it's quite exciting to see if we can recover the audio that's on this tape. Let's get started. All right, so I fast forwarded a little bit and I hit play and we've got the music in reverse. So obviously this tape is spooled backwards, so I will take care of that. And it's working, this is very good news. Uh, let's see if we can get the full quality audio off. Okay, so I've got some good news and some maybe bad news. Um, the good news, the tape is in good condition. It isn't exhi exhibiting any of the symptoms of sticky shed. Uh, there isn't any flaking and the tape audio quality sounds really good. The bad news maybe is that this is a two track tape and I have a four track deck. So what that means is that rather than having left, right, left, right uh, tracks and then you end up with uh, audio in both directions, this is just a two track tape. So you have left and right. And I just realized it says it on the box and it kind of makes sense for a master tape. This isn't something that you would play normally. You would just use this to uh, reproduce further copies, which is what we're trying to do here. So I won't be able to do a proper playback of this on this machine, but what I'm going to try, what I'm noticing is that the left channel is really strong and the right channel is really weak. So what I'm thinking I can do is play back the tape um, in both directions and record. And another piece of good uh, news that I, I forgot to mention, uh, this section of the tape, if you see here, there's a leader in the middle of the tape. So it's been spliced. And the first small section of the tape is just test tones, which are awesome because I can play those a few times without worrying about damaging um, the actual content on the tape that I'm worried about. So I'm gonna try recording the test tones, actually. I forgot to mention that and then see how they sound on the computer. And if that all works out, then I'll play back the actual album. Okay, so we're going to take one of the recorded files off of the recorder and um, do a little bit of editing to make it sound better. Um, obviously this is a two channel uh, tape and my machine is a four channel machine. So it's only gonna do so much, uh, but I think we can get a pretty good quality output. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start up a new multi-track session in uh, Premiere, or Adobe Audition rather, and I'll call this um, just for uh, full honesty, I've actually done this once already and it worked really well. Um, so we're going to need the raw file, which is taken straight off of the um, off of the recorder. So first thing we're going to do is uh, change the sample rate. So we're going to interpret the sample rate 
at twice what it was recorded at to make it effectively play twice as fast. So it'll take a, a four minute file and turn it into a two minute file. Uh, so we'll do that. And then we split the file into mono tracks so that we can play with them separately. Uh, the left channel I think is fine, but the right channel needs to be amplified. Now obviously this sucks, you know, it's a pretty big <laughs> boost here, uh, you know, 16 dB. Um, but that brings it up and looks at, makes it look quite similar to the other one. Uh, then we jump over to the, um, to the multi-track um, area editor and we're going to drag the left in. It's going to say that the sample rates don't match, so it's going to do a quick conversion. And then we're going to drag the other track in, do the same thing. Um, and then we're going to pan this one off to the right and we're going to pan this one off to the left and we'll trim up a little bit of this lead in silence here. Okay, and then we'll bring them both to the front. So let's give this a quick play and you'll already get to hear that it sounds decent. So it's pretty good, uh, but I think the next thing we need to do is apply a little bit of EQ. Now, I'm not gonna go into this in a ton of detail because it took me a little while to get this the way I wanted it to sound, but um, basically there's a ton of high frequency content missing, um, or rather a little bit, um, it's a little bit attenuated because the, the heads are not aligned properly on the track. So you can just do a, a quick bump, you know, maybe 3 dB on 500 and then four or five on a 1K, um, you know, we'll do seven and then we'll do, uh, eight, 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 or something like that. There really isn't a lot of information up at those high frequencies anyway. Uh, three, five, seven, eight, eight, eight. Then we gotta do the same thing on the other one. Uh, so we do 10 band and we want uh, three, five, seven, eight, eight. Whoops, eight and eight. All right, and if we play that again, there's a little bit more, it's a little more lively, a little less subdued on the top end. So it's pretty good. Now to my ear, um, you know, I've heard this album a number of times as a kid on cassette. And to my ear, this is far better than what I remember as a kid. Obviously this is not gonna be as good uh, of, a, um, of a transfer as a proper two track playback at 15 inches per second. So I'm probably gonna send the tape out and have it professionally transferred anyway. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll just do a quick um, mix down. So we'll just call this one album demo dot flack. Stereo, 16-bit, and there we go. Um, so now I can take this uh, demo flack and play it in VLC. And share it around and do whatever I wish. So um, this is all nice. Um, the other thing that's interesting and worth looking at here, uh, if I bring up the album, uh, let me see here, this one. Uh, Something that's interesting to me um, is if you take a look at the waveforms of the individual tracks, uh, you can see, oh, we don't want track one, we want demo album, here we go. You can see that on the left, we've got more high frequency content. The waterfall chart pops up a little bit higher than the last track. And you can actually hear this when you play this, the, the album. Let me go back to the, uh, to the full one where it's EQ'd. So it sounds pretty good. And then when you go to the end, significantly flat um, and this is at the point where I think the tape started shedding um, and it seems like the beginning of the tape is in far better condition than the end of the tape I'm not really sure why that is um, but I cleaned up my machine and there there was a bunch of um, magnetic tape residue in there so anyway that's the process that I used to take the raw audio captured off of the tape uh, edit it to make it sound a little better using Adobe Audition Okay, so I was just removing the tape after doing a full transfer and it was shedding. Not nearly as bad as the pictures show on Wikipedia, but this is not great. So I was able to get a recording of the tape from end to end and uh, there was a little bit of shedding. You can see it there on the heads, just a tiny amount. We'll focus. Uh, but I don't know that the damage is totally fatal. Uh, so I'm going to send the tape off to video99.co.uk. Hopefully he'll accept my, my request for service.
um, because I know that he'll do a great job. Um, <laughs> this is not easy. Um, the machine I'm using here obviously is not the correct speed and uh, not the correct channel layout either. So it'll be really nice to have this played back on a machine that is the right speed and the right channel layout to get the best uh, stereo quality. But I'm really happy that I was able to get at least one recording onto the, uh, onto the task cam. It did a really nice job. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. It was really fun to transfer this tape. Um, like I mentioned, it was in a safety deposit box for decades, and I think I got to it just in time. As you saw, there was a small amount of shedding uh, towards the end of the tape, and I cleaned the heads um, you know, since I finished this, and you can see that they're definitely not, uh, not clean anymore. Uh, and they were clean when I started, so kind of a bummer, but uh, we got it just in the nick of time, and it wasn't nearly as bad as some of the tapes I've seen online. So I am going to send this off to Video99 or, or Colin, he's another YouTuber who's got a whole bunch of really cool gear. Um, and so it would be great to see if he can do an even better transfer using a machine that's got the proper track layout and uh, the right speed. So that'll be really cool. Um, if you want to see more from me, hit the subscribe button. Uh, I make videos every once in a while, not too often, but uh, every time I get a project in my head, I'll make a video about it and share with the world. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. It definitely encourages me to do this more. And if you have any comments or you want to tell me I'm crazy and I did this all wrong, uh, leave a comment below. Um, I definitely read them, and it's my first time doing a tape transfer, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Anyway, that's all I've got for now, and so with that, I will see you next time.